ladies and gentlemen, The War Within is days away from releasing, which means that right now all the tuning and the changes are set in stone, at least at this stage. If you're still wondering what healer to play, this video is exactly for you. It's not a tier list, plenty of those out there, I'm just going to go through each healer and each spec and let you know what to expect if you decide to play them and whether or not you should do that. Discipline Priest picks between Void Weaver and Orco Hero Talents. The first one is pretty cool looking and it's a lot of fun to play, while the Orco provides a little bit more complex gameplay style. But both of them leave you with big windows in between your cooldowns that you need to somehow fill in and survive. With Void Weaver being a little bit better in that regard, while Orco seems to be suited much better for Holy Priest than Disc. That leaves a little bit less flexibility because it seems like you're locked into being Void Weaver and not having the options to pick the Orco Hero Talents. And if we talk about Mythic Plus specifically, I would definitely not recommend playing Disc, as you're not only going to struggle keeping people alive out of your cooldowns, but also you're lacking Interrupt, Good CC and Poison the Spell, all of which are going to be crucial for the Mythic Plus season in The War Within. All things combined, I think this is going to be the worst class to play as a healer in Mythic Plus, but when it comes to raid, the Void Weaver is probably going to perform quite nicely there. Your ramps are going to be quite strong, the downtime when you don't have cooldowns rolling can be filled in by other healers, and of course there's no need for interrupts and poison the spells. So if your thing is playing Discipline Priest in raid, you're going to have some good time during Season 1 of The War Within. When it comes to Holy Priest hero talents, it's kind of the same, you have the Archon which is pretty cool looking and a lot of fun to play, and then you have Orko, which seems to be much better suited for Holy Priest than Disc. But again, playing correctly with it requires a bit more skill. If we talk about Mythic Plus, it's a little bit better suited than Discipline Priest, as your spot healing is top notch, you struggle a little bit with AoE healing, but the rest of the problems are still there, you don't have interrupt, you don't have poison the spell, you don't have good CC, so playing Holy in Kiss is definitely going to be much more challenging compared to other healers. When it comes to raids though, I think this is where Holy Priest is going to shine. Both hero talents can provide a lot of HPS there, with of course Archon being much easier to play, and Orko having much higher skill ceiling, but also providing much more rewards if executed correctly. So the final verdict for both priest specs seems to be pretty damn good in raid, but not so much for Matic Plus. Resto Druid seems to be one of the big losers for the War Within after being the top healer at the end of Dragonflight, but then seeing some nerfs ever since. It did get some nice improvements as the fluid form and some talent changes, but it seems not all of them were in the right direction and they came along with a lot of nerfs, so that left the spec in a kind of weird situation. When it comes to hero talents, they provide completely different playstyles. With Wildstalker focusing on you staying in cat form and doing damage, while Keeper of the Groove focuses on your trends and provides some extra buffs if you stay in caster form. And while this variety is nice, Wildstalker seems to be suited only for people who enjoy cat weaving a lot, specifically in Mythic Plus, as it seems quite irrelevant in raid. While Keeper of the Groove playstyle seems to suit both environments much better but it comes with the complexity of being a rest druid in mythic plus and just spamming rejuvenations in raid. So the verdict here is that rest druid is going to be decent in both environments, however I would only recommend it if you enjoy the respective gameplay style with either wildstalker or keeper of the groove. Mist River Monk also saw a lot of changes compared to Dragonflight, but all of them seem to be on the positive side. The biggest thing about this pack is that it only has basically one option when it comes to hero talents. The big loser is Master of the Harmony, which feels nice, it has interesting gameplay style, nice idea, but it's just not there when it comes to numbers and performance. But yet that doesn't seem to be that bad because the other option, Conduit of the Celestials, seems to be more than enough. 
Not only it vibes perfectly with the fantasy of the class, its performance and gameplay style also complement the monk both in Mythic Plus and Raid scenarios. If you're a fan of the fist weaving gameplay style in Mythic Plus, then this class is totally recommended as now it's even better than what it was in Dragonflight. However, if your interest lies in the raid, keep in mind that the gameplay style there is probably a little bit different as fist weaving is okay, but it's not as viable as playing a more caster oriented build. So the conclusion here is that Mistweaver is pretty good pick for both Mythic Plus and Raid, but keep in mind that the gameplay styles in both environments are different. Holy Paladin seems to be very similar to Mistweaver. It saw a lot of changes, most of them were positive, and from the hero talent's perspective, it seems that only one of them is viable. The Lightsmith seems to have some very niche situational usages in both Mythic Plus and Raid, but most of the time, and by most of the time I mean like 99% of the time, you're probably gonna be picking Herald of the Sun. Another hero talent spec that vibes really well with the class fantasy, but it also buffs the Paladin core gameplay style back to a level where it's actually playable compared to the end of Dragonflight. It comes with very nice spot healing and a lot of utility that you provide in Mythic Plus, with more than decent capabilities to handle AoE situations, and at the same time it pumps in raids and the numbers definitely seem to be there. So as long as you're fine with having only one hero talent options, we can safely say that it's good to see Holy Paladin being back, as it's going to be quite solid choice for both Mythic Plus and raiding. Preservation Evoker seems to be one of the big winners in the War Within. It's currently one of the higher HPS healing classes in the game. Hopefully they don't nerf that. And also both of the hero talent specs seem to be quite viable. Chrono Warden brings many of the Dragonflight tier set bonuses back, contributing to the same smooth and engaging playstyle that we had with the Preservation Evoker but only better, while Flame Shaper introduces a new engulf skill which is quite powerful but it comes at the price of a more complex gameplay style as it adds a lot of new interactions with your existing toolkit. It's basically another high skill high reward kind of team, but the good thing is that you can make both of the hero talents work in both Raid and Mythic Plus which makes Preservation Evoker one of the most solid picks for Season 1 in The War Within. Yes, you still have to deal with the short range, with Augmentation Evoker being meta, all those things that we know from Dragonflight, but I don't think that should be any reason to prevent you from playing the spec, as those are just minor issues. And last but not least, we have the Restoration Shaman, who also saw some changes and a small rework just before the launch of the War Within. It's definitely another winner going to the new expansion because both of the hero talents are also viable playing Restoration Shaman. Similar to the Evoker, both of them could be suited quite nice to play both in Raid and Mythic Plus, with the current tuning also providing some quite nice HPS numbers. The Totemic hero talents are extremely pleasant to play with, as they basically make your healing rain instant cast and all the totems that you cast also cast automatic chain heals which makes the gameplay much more easier, smoother and robust, and I think that we can easily say that when it comes to Mythic Plus content, this is going to be the best bug healer. At the same time, the Farseer hero talents are another high skill, high reward agenda, as there you still have to cast your healing rain, your chain heals, and on top of that you have to maintain and summon ancestors to help you heal and do damage. But if you execute it correctly, it's definitely competitive with Totemic and in some cases it's probably even better. Considering that Resto Shaman now also provides the Sky Fury buff, this is also one very solid choice for both Mythic Plus and Raid content. So that will be all the healing specs, hopefully this makes your decision a little bit easier for the War Within, let me know what it is in the comments below, I'll see you guys in the next video, now get out of here.